Have you ever watched a film that left you profoundly ambivalent about it? Wicked City is a 1987 anime film by Yoshiaki Kawajiri, who both wrote and directed it, and would go on to direct Ninja Scroll, Vampire Hunter D. Bloodlust, and Highlander The Search for Vengeance. He's still working in the anime industry today, uh, mostly as a storyboarder on shows like One Punch Man. But he's definitely a very well-known and uh, uh, remarkable figure. Kawajiri is known for sex, violence, and very stylized character designs. And all three of those are here in copious amounts. And that's the trouble, but that topic is further towards the horizon first. Let's just get the lay of the land here. Wicked City is a supernatural noir film using those terms very deliberately, about a demon hunter, human, who is asked to team up with a woman who is from the demon world. Their job is to protect a delegate to an upcoming conference between the human and the demon worlds. They will keep the two at peace. So the structure is sort of like a buddy cop flick, but it is not funny. At all. At all. Instead, it's an intense thriller with particularly careful attention to color. An early action scene, for example, takes place at an airfield where the intense color of the runway lights creates an action sequence drawn almost entirely in blue with occasional red highlights. It creates an unworldly feel, very appropriate for a supernatural story and a very welcome change from typical brightly colored anime fare, particularly the stuff of the 80s. Kawajiri uses high-budget animation for all of Wicked City's action sequences. Though the character designs are so stylized and the camera angles often so distinctive that it isn't as pleasing as the naturalistic animation of, say, a Studio Ghibli film. They pour many frames of animation into quite a few shots, but they're so sensationalized that the buttery smooth animation is often overshadowed by the fantastical nature of the shot itself. So just be prepared for something that doesn't look like your typical anime film. Otherwise, Kawajiri absolutely makes use of anime's famous conservation of animation. Conversation scenes restrain the amount of animation to occasional character expressions, the, the typical somebody standing there, just their lip flaps, reserving animation for the action scenes that need them. And there are quite a few of them. The film never feels like it is cheap. Which leads to another remarkable aspect of Wicked City. It's editing and pacing. While absolutely a slow film at many times, it's been, it's been compared to Blade Runner in that way, it's never really boring, unless you don't like slow films. Those slowdowns are deliberate breathers between action scenes, setting mood and letting the viewer focus on plot points and sometimes the ridiculous nudity and such, but we'll get to that later. The plot, thankfully, is relatively straightforward, but contains just enough depth for a few plot twists and revelations. It rewards attention, you want to keep watching it, but it doesn't get too wrapped up in itself like some avant-garde films. Now that plot develops into sort of a will-they-won't-they -they tale about the protagonists the rather womanizing male agent and the sexy demon woman. The film does an impressive job of keeping them adults, both straightforward and professional, but who grow closer as their job kind of intensifies over the course of the film. The guy isn't trying to jump the girl's bones, and the girl isn't constantly vamping for the guy. They're pros, and that's very appreciated. But here's where I have to address the controversy. Wicked City has been blasted for its portrayal of women. All the female characters are trickster demons who use their sexuality to entrap men. Except the female agent, who is nevertheless presented as kind of the demonic equivalent of a succubus. Granted, she doesn't use those powers on the protagonist, but still, it's very much there. Worse, at one point the female agent is captured by the bad guys and subjected to a um, 
punishment scene which is very sexual i'll just put it that way it's not very fun to look at it's basically hentai um it's as close as you can possibly get that said while she's mistreated in the film she doesn't turn into a damsel in distress she does need to be rescued but she's not you know sitting there helpless the whole time you know for the entire film she is a pro throughout and acts where she can also, of course, there are plenty of evil male characters as well. So, on the one hand, this is not a movie where all women are evil corruptors and all men are good. On the other hand, it's not exactly the most healthy film about gender you're ever going to watch, so be ready for that. However, it is a beautiful, carefully crafted film about desire, among other things. The male agent begins the film psychologically adrift, working several jobs, but not particularly passionate about any of them. Similarly, he's in no serious relationships, but instead bouncing from girl to girl. Like in some cases, literally bouncing, you get the drift. The ordeals he faces over the course of the film force him to make hard choices about his life, to face serious commitment on multiple levels. This is part of why while there are plenty of absurdly sexualized portrayals of women and female anatomy, by the way, I, I can't dismiss Wicked City as just an adolescent, nudity-filled, brainless action flick. There's quite a bit to unpack, and while it's no Citizen Kane, it certainly left an indelible impression on me. And isn't that what we ask of art? <laughs>